Welcome. My name is Paul Cook, and I'm a director in the Windows Client Organization. And today, it's my pleasure to talk to you about the great security enhancements we've made in Windows 7 and give you an overview of the technologies that we hope help enable end-to-end -end trust. From an overall perspective, Windows 7 builds upon the great things that we've done in Windows Vista. It's really about taking all those great architectural changes in Windows Vista and enhancing them in the Windows 7 timeframe. We're really hopeful that as you get to know the product, you'll see that we've made it a lot more manageable and we've made it simpler to use for both end users and IT professionals. And hopefully, the investments we've made, you'll find valuable within your organization. So let's talk about each of these pillars in a little more detail. First, really, Windows 7 is a fundamentally secure platform, and it's built upon those foundations that we made in Windows Vista. So the, the architectural changes and the security enhancements we made around data execution prevention, address space layout randomization, and kernel patch protection, and all the other goodness from a security perspective that we put into Windows Vista, we carry forward into the Windows 7 timeframe. You know, one of the things though we, we did is make sure with IE8 though, that we made sure that DEP and ASLR were fully enabled in IE8 on the Windows 7 platform. So it's not something we had with IE7 um, back on Windows Vista, but we've got that all worked out in the Windows 7 timeframe. You know, so that foundation that gave us one of the most secure operating systems ever put on the marketplace, we're building upon that with Windows 7. And really believe that we'll have a great platform in the Windows 7 timeframe for people to run their businesses on. But there's some other areas that we, we've got some feedback on around user account control and also around some of the auditing changes we made in the Vista platform. So we've spent a lot of time talking with customers and understanding their needs so that we can make sure we address those concerns in the Windows 7 timeframe. So let's talk quickly about user account control. Now, there's been a lot of feedback and a lot of talk in the Windows Vista timeframe about UAC. And I think a lot of people have gotten caught up in the whole consent prompt and the things that go on there. What they really have kind of forgotten was that UAC is about making the system work well for a standard user. So that all users, you know, including administrators, they run as a standard user by default. And it's only when an administrator needs to get full access do they actually get a token that gives them full administrative privileges. A lot of folks have been really focused on that consent prompt and lost focus on UAC really is there to help you run your organization as a standard user. And I think we can all agree that if I have a majority of my organization running as a standard user, that I'm going to be a lot better off from a security perspective because anything that they download and run, I'm not having to worry about system-wide malware and you know attacks across my entire organization. You know, clearly though, there was a lot of feedback about the consent prompt and, and how often it came up and why it even came up, and you know that drove a lot of folks in the enterprise environments to to disable UAC, and really from my perspective, that's a terrible thing because UAC is not just the consent, the consent prompt. It's also about mandatory integrity controls. It's about folder and uh, registry virtualization so that applications that were written with the thought that they had complete access to the system, well, it actually will virtualize those things out so that if I have a bad application that thinks it's running as an administrator, it'll virtualize those into my user space so that I'm not corrupting you know, my overall system. And a lot of people turn that off, and when they do it, it's not the prompt they're turning off, it's everything else as well. And this also turns off protected mode IE, which has been shown as a great way to help folks that are browsing to make sure that they stay secure. So within Windows 7, we've taken a lot of that feedback to heart, and we've spent a lot of time instrumenting the operating system and, and seeing what goes on. And in the beta of the product, we've got great feedback, and we've got you know, great reports on the, the prompt reduction in the OS. And we've done that by doing a lot of work to make sure we understand the things that users do and when they really truly need administrative privilege. So we've been able to refactor a lot of the control panel into read-only as well as privileged administrative portions. You know, the firewall is a great example of this, so I encourage you to take a look at that. And we've done a lot of things understanding maybe we had ACLs that were too restrictive. We had things in place that kept 
standard users from being able to do something when in reality there was no security context there at all. And as a result, we could remove some of those restrictive apples. So we've done a lot to really reduce the overall number of prompts that you'll see in the system. But if you have to run as an administrator and you're not running as a standard user, you're still going to get some prompts. But what we've done is we've put the user in control of those prompts by giving them a flexible prompt behavior mechanism. As a result, those folks that choose to run as an administrator can dial in the level of prompting that's most appropriate for their environment and, and the things that they need to protect from from a threat perspective. The end result is we really believe that you know, all users will see much fewer prompts and that you know, we're really doing more and more to help unlock that standard user environment for an organization. The second piece is around desktop auditing from a fundamentals level. In Windows Vista, we did a lot of work on the subsystem to change things over to be XML event-based. We totally rewrote the event viewer, make it easier for you to be able to go through and filter out noise and find the events that were important for what you were trying to look for. But, you know, there were some other issues. We didn't really take into consideration the overall end-to-end -end experience. Um, if I needed to deploy these new granular audit policies in the Windows Vista timeframe, I'd have to write a script that I'd run at machine startup. And this was cumbersome for a lot of IT organizations. And we also heard a lot of feedback around, well, how can I understand why someone has access to information, or why someone was denied access, or maybe even more importantly, what are the administrators doing in my environment? So we've done a lot of work to enhance that great foundation in Windows Vista in the Windows 7 timeframe. You know, the first thing we did was we enabled all those granular audit policies in group policy. As a result, I can now set group policy objects to control those things in my environment and no longer do I need scripts to run every time my machine comes on. We've also added specific information in the audit records whenever someone tries to access information. And the result is I can see exactly why I was given access to a file or maybe why I was denied access. If any of you have ever gone through and tried to unwind why someone was denied access to something, it gets really cumbersome when you start looking at, well, understanding how they had access in the first place. Was it a privilege issue or was it a group membership issue? And when we look at all the nesting of groups, it gets really complicated to understand which group specifically gave them access. Well, now I can easily find that information right there in my audit logs and start to quickly unwind what's going on so I understand why users have access to information in my environment. The last piece was really around, you know, helping solve the problem, you know, who watches the watchers. So in, a, in an environment, administrators have complete access to the data on the machines that they administer. And while we would like to believe that administrators are very trustworthy entities, a recent survey showed that 70% of administrators in IT environments admitted to at some point in their career going through and looking at information that they shouldn't have been looking at, whether that was an email to CEO, maybe a layoff list of a pending layoff, or even the salary information for their little work group. You know, a full 70% of IT administrators have admitted to doing that. So, you know, who watches them? How do we watch the watchers to make sure that our information is being handled appropriately? Well, in Windows 7, we've made changes to the SACL infrastructure so that we can go through and easily capture all the um, accesses that administrators, either an individual or group of, in, of users in our environment, that they go out and touch. So it's a simple group policy change that allows me to do this. In the Vista timeframe, I'd have to visit every single object that I thought a user might access and make explicit changes there. Something that's not very scalable, and Windows 7 helps solve this with the global SACL. Now the next piece that customers told us was really important was how do we help secure anywhere access? More and more users today are mobile and in a very short order we really expect the number of laptops sold in the marketplace to be greater than the number of desktops sold. So how do we make sure that we give people secure anywhere access to all the data and the applications they need in their environment? Well, the first piece is really around how do we have core network security in the operating system? And in Windows 7, we've enhanced the firewall profile so that now that they're multi-home, so when I connect to maybe my corporate network from home, each logical network has its own profile that is appropriately set for the environment that that network is talking to. We've also introduced DNSSEC, so the core RF 